So I have a question. Why are there no overweight people in Colorado? This video is going to solve that mystery. And this is based on a very interesting book that presently it's not released yet, but I got an advanced copy. By the time you're watching this, it's probably being released right now. So I will put a link down below. But today we're gonna to dissect this mystery of why there's no fat people in Colorado. So is it that they're out exercising all day long? Could it be the food they're eating? Or maybe they have more money for health foods. And so this question puzzled the author for quite some time. And so the first thing he did is he looked at the states where you had the most obesity and he isolated those. And he found an interesting correlation between higher concentrations of black Americans, Latinos. And he also looked at the American Indian reservations. And that's all interesting, but it gets even more interesting when you look at what is unique about that. And there's one thing that's unique and that has to do with the pigment on someone's skin. It's called melanin. And melanin happens to be a natural sun blocker. In other words, the darker your skin, the more protection you have against UV radiation. Now, what does UV radiation have to do with obesity? Well, UV radiation interacts with your skin and it makes vitamin D. And it is true that if you look at the levels of vitamin D, vitamin D levels are low in certain populations. And so that's very interesting. But is there any other data that aligns with this connection between vitamin D deficiency and obesity? There's a direct relationship. In fact, and I'm going to put the paper down below. I don't know if this is a recent discovery or it's been out for a long time and no one really saw it, but vitamin D directly regulates the oxidation of the fat burning process in your adipose tissue. And so vitamin D increases the expression of the release of fat from your fat cells. Vitamin D is also intimately involved in insulin. In other words, a vitamin D deficiency can be something that causes insulin resistance. And if you have enough vitamin D, it can greatly help you um, in your sensitivity with insulin because insulin has a main function of fat storage. And this also kind of correlates to in the winter months, right? When we don't get enough sun, we don't get enough vitamin D, we have more fat storage. And then in the spring and the summer, uh, people tend to lose more weight. They come out of hibernation, right? Could that be related to vitamin D? Well, I think so. Women that are pregnant, that are low in vitamin D, these children later on in life, when they become adults, tend to be more overweight and on the obese side. And then being overweight in general tends to dilute vitamin D. In other words, the more weight that you gain, the more vitamin D you're gonna need because a lot of this vitamin D is absorbed in the fat cells. And so there's a very strong link between vitamin D and your fat cell that I didn't even realize until reading this book. I mean, even look at the risk factor for metabolic syndrome. Okay, there's always a vitamin D deficiency. What is metabolic syndrome? It's a combination of high glucose, then you have high cholesterol, you have high blood pressure, you have abdominal fat. Every single one of those symptoms, including insulin resistance, relates to low vitamin D levels. And this also could explain that when someone has high blood pressure and they take vitamin D, their blood pressure tends to go lower. All right, getting back to the geography of the United States, if you take a look at uh, the states that have more elderly people, they are more overweight. And we do know that the age of your skin has a lot to do with the absorption of vitamin D as well. And so that's another little piece of the puzzle that aligns to this idea. If you look at the trends of obesity, there's also this big spike of obesity in the United States that goes up roughly around 1980. And the author points out another interesting observation in the early 80s. This is when the experts or science started to tell people to stay out of the sun, to start using sunblock. Both of these actions will block your vitamin D. I was born in 1965. Through the 70s, I was a kid and uh, I did not observe a lot of overweight people in my school growing up. And we were outside all day long. We were not afraid of the sun, yet we were consuming a massive amount of sugar and carbohydrates. But I do know like in the 80s and the 90s, you started seeing more and more people that were overweight. Could it be this vitamin D connection? Well, it just so happens that Colorado has the highest elevation of any state 
in the United States. So this means you're going to get a lot more ultraviolet radiation and you're going to get a lot more vitamin D. You're going to get way more exposure, like three to five times more if you're higher up closer to the sun than if even if you're laying on the beach at sea level. And so if you're born in Colorado and you're living in Colorado and you have this chronic exposure to more sun and more vitamin D, it's going to greatly affect your expression of how you burn fat. And I think the key word is chronic exposure, right? It's, uh, it's how long someone's exposed to the sun or uh, getting vitamin D and in relationship to uh, what happens to the metabolism. I mean, just as another side note, I had a patient in practice who had this huge belly. And every time he went down to Florida and got a lot of sun, he came back, I swear, it, it was like, it was flat. And he didn't change his diet, by the way. And he came back and I'm like, wow, that's amazing. But you also have the latitude that the further you're away from the equator, the less UV you're gonna get as well. Now, what about in the Appalachian Mountains? You have white people who don't have a lot of melanin, but they're obese. They have a, a much higher um, rate of obesity and they're in the mountains. Now, what's interesting about these people living in the Appalachian Mountains is they're not necessarily living on the peak. They're living in the valleys. It's definitely not as high. And there's a lot of shadowing of these mountains. So they're living in the shadows, of the mountains, which would not give them more vitamin D. Like even vitamin D and how it affects your sleep cycles. If you're deficient in vitamin D, you don't get enough vitamin D, your sleep cycles are not going to be as great. In fact, if you have jet lag, for example, and you take vitamin D, it's one of the best remedies. It'll just kind of reset that circadian rhythm. And then you have sleep apnea, which is usually always a vitamin D deficiency. When you give people with sleep apnea vitamin D, they, they tend to not snore as much. They tend to sleep better. And then you have this connection between vitamin D and stress and cortisol. Cortisol, stress in general, lowers vitamin D. But when you take vitamin D, you can also help lower cortisol, which is a stress hormone, which can also make you gain weight. And this cortisol stress hormone can also create insulin resistance, right? And so if someone is vitamin D deficient and they get more inflammation, inflammation can directly cause insulin resistance as well, which is behind obesity. And then when you dive into the data of how vitamin D affects your mitochondria, if you don't have enough vitamin D, you get a lot of oxidative stress. The mitochondria doesn't work as well. And the mitochondria is the energy factory that is behind your metabolism. So this is just one of many of the mysteries that this author talks about. So I'm going to put the link down below for the book if you wanted to check it out. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.